never accept death when suffering is owed. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the uh, the Fast and the Franchise movie, Fast and the Furious franchise movie, Fast Ten. So this is the last latest movie in the franchise. This movie is apparently going to be three films leading to the whole end of the entire franchise. So we are going to go into spoiler territory for this first movie that is out as of right now out of these last three. If you haven't seen it, then here's your warning. There's also a good chance that we might get into spoilers for one through nine from the Fast movies. Not too, Probably won't try to get into too big spoilers, but... There's a chance we might cover them, so you've been warned. If you haven't seen them, you can go check them out. I think they're on Amazon right now for like another nine or eight days before they go somewhere else. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right in to see what we got to say about it. So to my knowledge, as I just found out, Cheryl, you have no ties and no affiliations and no real experience over the years with this franchise of films. Yeah, um, I kind of know a little bit about it because I've gotten some, like, background and, of course, like, you hear things. So I know about, like, some of the people that have been in previous movies. And Uh um, I've also seen, like, Hobbs and Shaw. That was kind of fun. Um, So, and, of course, I know about Paul Walker and everything. I saw a little bit of the first movie just to go back and look. And I also watched Fast 9, so I have an idea of what, um, where it started and where it kind of ended up being and where it is now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, like, for me, I'm the opposite. I've seen these movies since they were coming out, as they were coming out. And so I remember I saw Fast and the Furious, the first one, before I ever knew what Point Break was. I didn't see Point Break until a couple of years ago. And then when I saw Point Break, I understood what everyone had been saying, where they had described Fast and the Furious as Point Break with Cars. That is absolutely true. It is 100% Point Break with Cars. But I think one of the cool things about the Fast franchise is seeing how it evolved over time. I was with the film franchise for the first three films, um, for Fast uh, 1, 2, and Tokyo Drift. And then after that, I kind of fell off, and I didn't see Fast 4 when it came out in theaters. But I did see Fast 4 later when I found out they were going to be making Fast 5. And Fast 4 was interesting because the Fast and the Furious franchise had a kind of rotating um, main characters that had kind of come and gone. So, like, the first movie was... Paul Walker and Vin Diesel, but then Vin Diesel didn't want to come back for the second one, but Paul Walker still was there. That's how Tyrese and Ludacris came into the franchise. And then the third movie, none of them were in that film. Um, and that cast, those cast of characters, we hadn't seen any of them before in the Fast and the Furious franchise. And then in four, they kind of brought, they brought back all of the original cast of characters. They brought back um, Michelle Rodriguez as Letty. They brought back Mia. Um, and they obviously had Vin Diesel as Toretto and um, Paul Walker as Brian. And then that led to them getting to Fast Five where they brought in people like The Rock. And then at this point we had a new kind of real franchise that was kind of surprising. It kind of took off where it had become more than just these this movies about like these cars and these heists. It actually almost kind of became their own little superhero films. It's kind of crazy like seeing how this franchise became just like this small little thing about like stealing cars or stealing like um, what microchips or whatever the first one was about, I forget. And then now it's like full on like spy espionage, like super high tech and all this other stuff. And it was really to me, I think it was Fast Five that really kind of flipped the switch and elevated it to a whole nother level because that was the film where they brought back characters from all of the movies we had seen before. They brought back um, the characters from two. They brought back like Han from Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. And so, and then they brought in new characters and then those characters carried us on until the sixth movie and then the seventh movie. And then they've just been with us the entire, the entirety of the rest of this uh, journey. And so now here we come at, fi- at Fast 10, which is kind of a direct connection to Fast and the Furious 5. It's almost kind of like a 
um, a sequel to Fast and the Furious 5 because we're actually dealing with the fallout of the things that happened in that movie with one of the characters being a relative of the main villain that was killed in Fast 5. So it's interesting with this movie because it starts off by showing you a kind of a flashback of what happened in five but you didn't actually see five so like did the flashbacks and stuff that they showed like kind of leading into this movie can that did that, did that kind of work for you that it help you kind of jump on board um yeah it did because well i think it was a nice setup um just kind of showing like i mean it was obviously a flashback because paul walker was there and um uh, I don't know, and I, well, I guess it kind of helped to be watching with someone who was familiar with the Fast franchise telling me that this is from, like, an old movie, but I thought it was kind of a cool way to, to mm -hmm. you know, insert the villain and kind of set up, you know, the story for this. It's always nice when it's, like, connected to something that um, people are familiar with, and also it's just a cool action scene. Yeah. So, I mean, otherwise, like, I mean, what else do you start an action movie with if not a car chase for fast <laughs> for a fast and furious movie um but um but yeah thank you for that uh actual um you know background on it because i didn't i didn't know about the whole thing about it changing at um on the fifth movie because to mm -hmm. me i'm like oh it just kind of gradually happened from like one and then i saw nine and i was like this is nothing like the first movie <laughs> <laughs> like what is this how did they get here and I, like i'll never know because i'll have to like watch all the old movies which i may like get around to at some point but um I mean, my opinion of the ninth movie was like, oh, they, they're just doing like any, like you really have to suspend belief because they're just doing anything and everything now. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like on missions and stuff like that. And apparently they have like hella money to like wreck all these cars and equipment. Um, so it's, it's completely different. It's like just really jarring if you like put the first movie next to the ninth movie and then now after seeing the ninth movie and going into the tenth movie i'm like yeah this is regular mm -hmm. but it did kind of <laughs> give me like a different vibe so i didn't really know what um what to expect i just threw it on to watch um okay so I didn't know that it was going to be a three-part movie. Uh, I thought, like, oh, maybe just a two-part movie, obviously because of, I like, you know, I watched it, and I know how the movie ends, and it doesn't. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I know there's another movie coming. Um, but it definitely gave off that vibe, like, I think this is going to be, like, the last one. And the reason is because they're obviously bringing everyone back. There's a lot of cameo scenes and nope. I haven't seen the movies like Gal Gadot. Um, I know Helen Mirren had like a little cameo in the ninth movie, so I know of her. Um, I know The Rock was in it, and I didn't know that. Um, oh shoot, what's his name? Um, the guy who plays Peacemaker. <laughs> oh, John Cena. Yeah. Um, I I didn't know that he was in it. I think I've seen Charlize Theron. So there's just like everyone is back and you know when they bring everyone back um they're probably closing up so i thought it was interesting like if you have if you have no information at all like i have had some information um so like kind of watching this with what information i had felt kind of like i i kind of wish that i was a big fast fan because i feel like they're delivering here by bringing everyone back yeah and see i had a friend um who actually strike a man who had not seen any of the fast movies outside of i think the first one and then the first movie he came back into the franchise with was fast 10. that was the first movie he saw and like in the franchise as far as like coming back in and so then after that he like kind of saw a couple of out of order and then he started watching them in order i think he saw like three then two and then after that watched four through um uh oh tokyo drift was his first so there it is and then yeah um and then came back and was watching like 10 and then yeah he was out of order and then eventually came back in order and then was watching them up until nine 
Um, and so now he's up to date. And so I, for me, like, I love what they have done with this franchise because it it's just so cool to see how it grew because you weren't expecting it to become such this big thing. And like you said, like, the names that you mentioned as people that are in this film, even as a cameo, these are big names, you know? These aren't, like, small, like, actors. These are, like, really good, big actors, you know? And it's just really cool to just see how how much this has how much this has grown over the years. I mean, Jason Statham is also a part of the franchise uh, franchise now, and yeah, there's just so many, and it's and who knows who they're going to be bringing back in like the the last two films, right? But it really felt like a culmination of all of the great characters and some of the greatest moments that we've seen in the franchise leading up into this movie, like the music and everything, like the music in Fast and the Furious franchise has always hit. Like I was thinking about this the other day and I can't think of one Fast movie that I, like I remember watching where I heard like the the tracks that they played in the film or they played on the credits that didn't have me wanting to get up and dance, like, or just bop to it. Like these, these movies have a style and a cadence like is like no other. And then, you know, I'll just talk about this briefly because it's actually, it's not like it's unimportant, but it's like one of the things that it doesn't, it's not as important for the film, but it, it does matter. It also has one of the most diverse cast of characters as far as leading people, leading men and women from all like different like colors and creeds. And I think that that's one of the coolest things as well, where you have this franchise is being led by all these different colored people and it's successful and it's cool and it's fun and it brings and it brings in the viewerships it brings in the numbers so this this movie is this movie franchise as a whole is just on another level for me and i have so much love for it um for me it's like one of the, it's even a bigger franchise to me than like marvel you know this bigger than them for me and i've been falling and it's been around longer than them um and now they brought in jason momoa as a villain and as was mentioned in the chat earlier he is one of the greatest villains in this franchise and he's so much fun to watch but um I, yeah i kind of want us to talk a little bit about like what ha kind of happens in the movie and just kind of your thoughts on just this movie as a whole um i mean you definitely have to suspend belief <laughs> um, cars and people fly <laughs> yeah and like i I won't, I won't even get into it, but, like, it, it's it's definitely um, out there in terms of, like, plausibility and physics and <laughs> everything. What are so, physics? <laughs> exactly, what are physics? Exactly. But, um, I mean, it, it, I feel like it's pretty simple um, in terms of, like, story. It, it's it's. Essentially, it's just a, a revenge movie, and Jason is. Momoa um, is awesome. It's it's like kind of different to you know see him as like a villain, like this kind of villain. And I know we've seen him at, in, in you know Game of Thrones being like a bit of a villain for a while, but then you know then you root for him, and you know, but he's right. also like like a stoic guy, and then you know then you see him as like Aquaman, also you know very stoic, and he's a good guy, and now you have this like lunatic basically kind of just doing whatever he wants he's like having like makeovers with like some <laughs> dead people that he probably murdered and stuff like that he he's, definitely like... murdered <laughs> <laughs> um and just i don't know like I, and at first i was like i can't take him seriously because he's like too wild it's like too much but then as time goes on, you're like, oh, actually, like, he is kind of scary. I mean, he is a big guy. And, you know, he is, like, intimidating people and, you know, buying people. And he's, like, defeating everyone. Even though, you know, there was this moment where Brie Larson's character ha can just, you know, shoot him. He's, like, <laughs> doesn't have a hostage anymore and stuff. Like, she has a gun pointed at him, but... They She's a good guy. They take people, they take them alive. In the foot. <laughs> Shoot him in the foot, the hand, something. Like, take him down, you know? Like, 
he broke the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that 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 dude had to go. Um, someone told me that he's basically the Joker in this movie, and watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, they're right. He is, he is one hundred percent playing a Joker type role in this film. He's not super physical. Like the one fist fight we see him get in, he kind of gets his butt whooped. He just gets just takes punches. But even though he takes punches. He's still winning. And that's like the craziest thing to me is the fact that he is someone who he always feels like he's in control, even though he like physically he does seem imposing because he's a big guy, but he doesn't actually use that in the movie. He's not using that. They're trying to show you how much he's been thinking about this, how calculated he is. And he even he even does this whole little orchestra thing where when things are blowing up, he's like directing a symphony, which if you've seen any anime, the only time you see people do that is if they're absolutely insane. And that is exactly what what he does in that in that movie. He he's laughing uh, like all the time and like cracking jokes, um, even in parts where he 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 really shouldn't be. Um, when a character dies in this film, he he says, "Oh, he ain't gonna be at the family barbecue," and you're just like, "Oh, you jerk! Oh, you that's so mean! That's so mean! That's the type of character." He is. Um, he's fabulous in the movie. Like you said, like painting, painting his nails and wearing like, you know, um, outlandish and like bright colors and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I think that a lot of times movies are elevated by their villain. And like the Fast franchise has had a mixture of like interesting, good and bad villains as any franchise that's gone on this long would have. But he's definitely one of my favorites. And the way that he challenges uh, Dom or some of the other characters to get out of certain sticky situations, like, I think one of the cool things about this movie is some of how they make it so that these cars and motorcycles or whatever are doing crazy stunts or crazy, like, feats of, like... Def, like defying physics like you said um hitting a crane hitting a crane with your car so that it knocks a bomb into the ocean so that it doesn't blow up the vatican um that thing with letty where she literally used her motorcycle to like wheelie over a pole that had fallen or that that um um dante had used to try to like trip her up like there's just really cool moments it is an exciting movie i feel like like you said you have to uh, suspend your disbelief but once you do you're just in for a good time the movie isn't like high art by any stretch of the imagination but it's it's something that i think is fine for a movie to be and that's fun it's fun it's funny it's it's hip it's cool it's like so many great things that you walk out of the movie and you're just like i had a good time even and even though the movie is long like i think the movie is two and a half hours um if i remember correctly so i think it's about as long as like maybe like a john wick four um or maybe it's a little shorter than john wick four but whereas john wick four i kind of start to feel the runtime for this movie i didn't feel it at all yeah there's definitely um a big entertainment element to it and i think you know part of it is because of all the craziness that's happening and i think the characters are just you know interesting especially um jason momoa it's funny how you said that um he's kind of like the joker because i was like he's like this is kind of like batman because and I actually wrote that in my notes because, you know, he's saying, like, you have to choose who you're going to save. And they totally had that in Batman where he had to pick one of the people to save. I know they also did that in Spider-Man, but... Yeah, um, they do that. Yeah, they villains be doing that, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also there's, like, oh, they have, like, money and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, like... It's just entertaining, and I do I do want to go back, um, especially you know, after seeing the the element of nostalgia that they're bringing into this, I do kind of want to go back and watch the other movies just so that I could you know like like uh, Playmat said, be rewarded as a fan um, for mm -hmm. having like everyone come back, um, and I know like you know. They were barely in it, like Gal Galdo, uh, and The Rock wasn't even in the movie. He was in the after credit scene, and like I had heard like a little bit of uh, trivial stuff about um, The Rock not 
wanting to come back because he's right. been, like you know working with certain people um so i was like wow like i thought he wasn't gonna be in it and i guess that was kind of perfect that they put him in the after credit scenes because um i think that's what everyone was probably thinking thinking that he doesn't want to come back to be in it yeah. but jokes on you he is so <laughs> No, it's a, it's 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 like it's great because they basically had two stingers in the film, right? Because um, we didn't expect. I'll, I know you haven't seen the other movies, so I'll just say this: we did not expect Gal Gadot to come back for this movie. Okay. Um, absolutely not. Uh, based off of things that have happened, we did not expect her to be in this movie. So that already was a great stinger. And then, like you said, the whole thing with the the beef and the drama between Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel. We thought that he was never going to come back for these films. And then he, seeing him, it's like, oh, wow, he did too. So obviously we'll have to see what happens because the movie is like the next two movies are, are ways away. So anything can happen between now and then. Hopefully everything still comes together so that the franchise can like go out on a high note. But they, the, these were kind of the things that kind of took us by surprise as fans. And it really does feel like a love letter to the fans where it's like, hey, if you've watched these films, if you've been with us on this ride, like on this journey since the beginning, we want to make sure that we do right by you. We want to make sure that we remember characters you think we forgot about. And we want to make sure that at the end, when we watch that last scene of the, the final movie where they're all going to be um, around um, the dining table having their barbecue, that when we look at the faces that we have seen along the way, that we walk away and we say, you know what, this was worth it. And I'm a little nervous because I, I don't know what they're going to do with Brian O'Connor. That's uh, Paul Walker's character. And I feel like I heard them say that Brian is going to have something to do in these other movies. And I just don't know how I feel about that. Like when you see Seven, they give him a really good send off. Like Seven is actually a very emotional film for me and for most people. And yeah, so I'm just kind of curious of what they're, how they're going to try to use his character while still making sure they keep paying respect to his character. So we'll see what they do. But um, I'll say this, I'm, I'm here for the ride. I mean, uh, I'm on board. I want to see how they end it. Yeah, I think it's really widely known about um, the song that was written for him. Um, I yeah, think I can't all... talk about that song. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about that song. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But the, I like, I'll just say one quick thing. Um, I think it's really great that they used it. So, And I yes. think that was one of the, the scenes that kind of gave it away for me. Like, oh, they're really um, paying attention to this. So... Like in, in, in the the heartstrings for nostalgia, um, and I didn't know at the time, uh, and and I also didn't see like all the people coming back yet because it's pretty mm. early on in the movie. So I was like, why are they doing this? Yeah. Uh, but now I get it because <laughs> I was like, mm. it had been a while, so I don't know why they're you know kind of doing this again, and they didn't have uh, anything like that in Fast Nine. Although I think they talk about him, and you see like him from far away um yeah Paul i think his car character. drives up at the end yeah i think his car drives up at the end of the film something like that something where like you like he's mm -hmm. there but then not there um yeah kind of thing so i wasn't expecting that um i do have one question though um about like the just trying to make sense of the movie and that is um so agent ames is working with um Dante yeah and first of all he does when he arrests Vin Diesel's character um Dom he doesn't put handcuffs on him which I thought was kind of weird it's um, okay he would just break them <laughs> <laughs> um, don't worry about it it's happened they, true story <laughs> oh really yes okay. um all right anyways uh and then like they're like driving and then the the truck that they're in gets blown up and supposedly um at this point in the movie you're not supposed to suspect that agent ames is um like you know double agent kind of thing and he's actually you know working with dante but then why would dante blow up the truck that he's in because Dante doesn't care. <laughs> Dante, Dante's just trying to, like, cause chaos. But then so, why would Agent Ames still be on board to help him after almost being killed? 
wasn't killed. He was fine. He walked out. He knew the plan. He's he, they were like, we're gonna shoot around you. We didn't shoot. We didn't shoot you. So yeah, it was fine. Don't think about it too hard. All right, suspend belief. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, I I I think that's basically everything that I had that I wanted to say about this movie. I'm trying to remember. I don't think there's anything else. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to say before we get out of here? Um. No, I just wanted to mention, um, because we are also doing Mission Impossible, um, what was it? The Dead Reckoning De- Part Dead 1. Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, I just thought, like, it was funny, because while I was watching this, I was like, didn't I just watch another movie <laughs> that had these stairs in Rome? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I was thinking, oh, you watched another movie that was like, uh, like the last movie in a in a long running franchise, and it's the part part one of the of a sequel of mo- movies or a series of movies that are going to be ending out the franchise. But you're right. No, the steps we've seen those steps before. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I didn't even put that together. So, but. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll probably talk about this more on our, our Twitch channel. If you guys want to check that out, it's twitch.tv slash C3 Films. It'd be great to see you guys over there. But what did you guys think about uh, Fast 10? Did you enjoy it? Uh, do you think it's one of your favorite Fast movies? Are you going to be seeing the last two movies in the franchise? Uh, have you never seen these before and now you're kind of interested in watching them? What have you thought about this and more? Comment below. Let us know. And way down there, if you guys have like, share, and subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been... I am-